At school we are taught about plate tectonics and continental drift. What many may not be aware of is that there is a competing theory explaining the formation we see which takes a totally different approach. This is the idea of the expanding Earth. Halton Art was very keen on this idea as it would fit with the idea of matter being created at certain places like the centre of galaxies. What may surprise you is that one of the proponents of this concept early on was none other than Charles Darwin. Let's explore how this concept came about. The earliest mention of the idea of an expanding Earth can be found in mythology. The Vendidad is an ancient collection of Zoroastrian myths. In chapter 2 verse 18 to 19, the god Yima fulfills three times, at different times, the prayer of his people and expands the land available to men and herds. Then Yima stepped forward, in light, southward, on the way of the sun, and he pressed the earth with a golden seal, and bored it with a poniard. Speaking thus, O Spenta Armati, kindly open asunder and stretch thyself afar, to bear flock and herds and men. And Yima made the earth grow larger by one third than it was before, and there came flocks and herds and men, at their will and wish as many as he wished. The first mention of this in a publication comes from Nicholas Orosem, who dates from 1323 to 1382, and he wrote the following. From above it follows that if by tomorrow the world would become a hundred or a thousand times larger or smaller than it is now, since all its parts grow or diminish in proportion, all things would appear tomorrow just like now, as if nothing had changed. Similarly, if the centre of the earth was a concavity filled with air about the size of an apple, if such a concavity became a little bigger and growing up to become the greatest, you could not find a limit at which this growth can be said that the earth is out of its natural place, precisely because large and small are relative terms. In 1834, during the second voyage of HMS Beagle, Charles Darwin was investigating steppe plains such as the raised beaches in Patagonia. To him, this indicated that a huge area of South America had been uplifted to its present height by a succession of elevations which acted over the whole of the space with nearly an equal force. Darwin's hypothesis was that the uplift at this continental scale required the gradual expansion of some central mass acting by intervals on the outer crust. In 1835 he extended his concept to include the Andes as part of a curved enlargement of the Earth's crust due to the action of one connected force. In 1888 Ivan Osipovich Yarkovsky suggested that some sort of ether is absorbed within the Earth and transformed into new chemical elements, forcing the celestial bodies to expand. This correlated with the idea of a push gravity and particle ether, which we have previously discussed. These particles may then be absorbed by larger bodies. Both Art Christoph Hilgenberg and Nikola Tesla had put forward the idea of the absorption and transformation of ether energy into normal matter. In 1889 and 1909, Roberto Montavani published a hypothesis of Earth expansion and continental drift. He assumed that a closed continent covered the entire surface of the globe, but that this must have been a much smaller Earth. Thermal expansion led to volcanic activity, which broke the landmass into smaller continents. These then drifted away from each other because of the further expansion at the rip zones, where oceans currently lie. An alternative was put forward by John Jolie, who was an Irish physicist and professor of geology at the University of Dublin. He is famous for his development of radiotherapy in the treatment of cancer. He developed techniques to estimate the age of rock based on radioactive decay. His proposal was of an earth expansion and earth contraction cycle. He assumed that heat flowed from the radioactive decay inside earth and surpassed the cooling of the earth's exterior. Together with British geologist Arthur Holmes, 
he proposed a hypothesis in which Earth loses its heat by a cyclic period of expansions. This expansion would lead to cracks and joints in the Earth's interior, and this could fill with magma. This was then followed by a cooling phase where the magma would freeze and become solid rock again, causing the Earth to shrink. At the same time as these ideas were being put forward, the now accepted continental drift theory was also gaining traction. After initially supporting this idea of continental drift, Samuel Warren Carey became an advocate of the expansion concept. He demonstrated that subduction could not balance the seafloor spreading at oceanic ridges. In 1956 he proposed a mass increase in the planets and stated that the final solution to the problem is only possible in a cosmological perspective. In more recent times both Klaus Vogel and James Maxlow have defended Carey's expansion Earth hypothesis. One of the main objections to this model was the question of where this mass would come from. The fact that there was no demonstrable mechanism for this happening led to it being ignored and nowadays labelled as pseudoscience. But there were others who attempted to overcome this problem in a different way. Paul Dirac suggested in 1938 that the universal gravitational constant had decreased in the billions of years since its existence. This led German physicist Pascal Jordan to a modification of general relativity and to propose in 1964 that all planets slowly expand. Another idea came from J. Marvin Herndon who proposed that the Earth originated in its protoplanetary stage from a gas giant. During the early phase of the solar system, the dense atmosphere of the gas giant was stripped off by infrared eruptions from the Sun. The remnant was a rocky planet. Due to the loss of the pressure from its atmosphere, there would have been a series of decompressions that would have ruptured and expanded the surface of the Earth rapidly. He called his theory Whole Earth Decompression Dynamics and saw the sea floor spreading at the divergent plate boundaries an effect of this proposed system. In his opinion, mantle convection used in the concept of plate tectonics is physically impossible. The main arguments given against the idea of an expanding Earth are as follows. The Earth has not increased in size over the period we have been measuring it. This, I believe, is somewhat open to debate but it is something that we will come back to in future videos. Imaging of the lithosphere fragments within the mantle supports the lithosphere consumption by subduction. And lastly, the fact that no credible, in terms of their mechanisms, has been provided to supply this extra mass to allow for the expansion. And again, this is something that we will come back to in a future video. Now it is important to realise that although this theory of Earth expansion is not accepted by the mainstream geologists, Carey is widely regarded as making substantial contributions to the field of tectonics and has had a considerable influence on the initial acceptance of the continental drift model. In future videos I would like to take some of these aspects and drill down to understand the main problems with the current tectonics and how some of these alternative models may provide a better mechanism to explain what is going on. There are many aspects of an expanding Earth that I find appealing, but there are also many problems I see with this model, so hopefully by breaking down some of these topics we might be able to get a little closer to the truth and identify new avenues to explore. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.